Okay, for this fourth Think Aloud, we're going to talk about tools that you can use to be a more effective researcher. So one tool that is really useful and helps you be more efficient is a citation management software. And I'm going to talk about three different kinds of citation management software. But before we get there, I want to show you how you download um, the metadata on articles and books that you're finding so that then you can use the citation management software. So this is an article that I found in our catalog in USEARCH. And I looked at the article and I read the abstract and this looks really good. It's related to interdisciplinary work. So I am going to do an EndNote to Basic download. And when I click that, it will automatically send over the information on that article to my EndNote, which is already opened. And I'll show you that in a minute. Another way to do that is if you're in a database that doesn't have a direct export to EndNote, you can do cite this item and you have other options down here. Um, this RIS file is a, is a generic format and it is it works really well with Zotero and I have a Zotero connector installed in my browser. So it's saying, okay, so you want to put this into Zotero and then I can click boundary crossing and now it's saving it to my boundary crossing folder. Okay, that's another way through a, through a journal. So not all the journals have direct exports. Some of them do, so I'm just showing you a few examples. Another way to do it is through Google Scholar. Anytime I'm somewhere and I can't find an export in a specific um, database or journal, I go, I copy the title into Google Scholar, and in Google Scholar you can set up, so if I do search results, I can set up for an EndNote bibliography manager here, and when I save that, now I get a um, import into EndNote here. So I can click that. This still wants to do Zotero, but that's fine. can go to Zotero. So I'm saying, okay, I want that to be in my folder. Okay. Now EndNote looks like this, and they all kind of look the same. I'll show you all three of them. So um, when you put the metadata in here, EndNote does not, this is the free version, EndNote Basic, it's done through your web browser. It does not save your PDFs. So you do have links sometimes to go back to the record or to go to the URL. But then when you want to format, you say format, bibliography, and I'm going to say I want this boundary crossing folder, and I want it in APA 7, and there's other formats you can select. And I want it in rich text, which is like a Word doc, and I'm going to preview it. And this is how fast it is to format 124 citations. But again, disclaimer, this is not correct. These capital titles are not correct, so you'll have to do some editing. But then I can say select all, copy, and paste it into my Word doc. There's also a um, cite as you write that works directly in Word. And Zotero is really awesome because it saves the PDF along with your metadata. So here's the abstract, the article, all the information about that, um, that article. And then one thing that you can do is you can um, download articles and drag them into here and it will automatically create this data if it if it can. So for example, if I pull this article into here, all right, let me get back to here and I pull this into here, it will automatically create that information. I just did the same one twice, so I have it in there twice. I can delete it. But, you'll, but you see that it added the abstract, the information about the authors, all of that is in here now. Okay. The third product is called Mendeley. And um, I'm not going to open it. I can't remember my password right now. And I thought I was already logged in. But I guess I'm not. So I won't show you that one. But that one intersects with... 
the science databases, Web of Science, Scopus, PubMed really well. On the strategy number four page, you'll see that there are links to tutorials, information. The library guides will connect you with the librarian that is the expert on each of these tools. Rebecca is on Zotero, Shane is on Mendeley, and, and Lorelei is on EndNote. Okay. Another tool you might want to check out is Ubox, and Ubox is like Dropbox, but you actually have a terabyte of cloud storage space. You log in with your unit and password, so no need to have another password and log in. And it is FERPA and HIPAA compliant, so this is what it looks like. You just set up folders, you put your PDFs in there, you can set subfolders, you can add bookmarks, you can do little note-taking. Um, and it really helps you stay organized when you're downloading PDFs. So if you're not using Zotero, you can use this to store your PDFs. Another tool, the university has its own Google Drive site. It's called gcloud, gcloud.utah.edu. You log in with your unit and password, and it sets up a Google um, email with unit at umail, um, dot Google, I think, dot gmail dot com. So it will set up, it'll automatically do that for you. You can collaborate with people on campus without having to worry about what everybody's Gmail address is because you just look them up by their name and it finds them. This is another great tool that I use called Trello. And these are called, these four things are called lists. So I use this for my tasks and to get organized. So you see, this is for my logistics for my RPT process. So in 2011 to 2016, I did my tenure review, got tenure, yay. And these were all the tasks that I had um, that I needed to complete before I got to tenure. Now I'm on my five-year review, so 2017 to 2021. And I have a to-do, a doing, and a done column. And then I move my tasks from one column to the other. And what I like about this is I get to see all this stuff kind of accrue in my done column. So for example, this one, oops, this one I finished. So I'm just going to drag that down here to the bottom of my list of done. Done. It's in my done list. One less thing to do. So it's a great tool if you're into um, that type of project management. Concept mapping is a great tool. So I use CMAP. Um, that lets me visually look at my topic. So boundary crossing is in the middle, and then I have my subtopics, organizational spanning, interdisciplinary, third space, um, transitions, identity, and social formation. So as I find topics when I'm doing my research, I added them to my map, and then I added subtopics to my map, and... Um, this is a great way to visualize what you're doing. So I'm doing one right now for um, a website that I'm working on. So I can like click here and say, I want to do like um, R programming. Oops, and if I could just spell it right. And then I could say, I want to connect this one to this one. Okay, and these are um, programming tools. So then I could put R and I could put Python and I could create my map. You can export it out as a um, PNG file and keep a record of it. It's a really cool tool. So this is the strategy number four and these are all about building up and developing your toolbox to do research. These are all the links to the citation management tools, which is the most popular tool that most people use to help them be more efficient in research. There's Ubox links and link to the drive and Office 6, um, 365. The U also has their own version of that. And then if you're doing qualitative research, there are three links here to um, artificial intelligence, trans, um, transcript, um, a way to do your transcripts cheaper through artificial intelligence. So instead of sending it off for $2 a minute to have your um, interviews or your focus groups transcribed, these are a lot cheaper, like 25 cents a minute to have a computer do the transcription for you. So those are just some of the tools that might help you be a more efficient researcher. Oh, last one, Evernote. 
So I use Evernote and Evernote is kind of like a, um, a note, like kind of like a research journal for me. So these are all keywords and phrases that I copy and paste in here as I'm going through and doing my research. That was the last one I forgot. Okay. On to strategy five. 